Hey Crafty Fam, it's Alex Vanover. What is going on? I am back with another daily DIY gift idea, but today's idea comes with a tutorial. And we are gonna be making DIY resin photo coasters. They are super cool and super easy to make and really, really awesome. Now, originally this was not my idea, I got this idea from a blog post that my awesome friend Kayla sent me called Something Turquoise. Um, the blog is called somethingturquoise.com. So I'm going to link that for you in the description. I was going to do that before this and now I just realized that I didn't do that because I forgot. But that's okay because I'm still going to link it for you. It's an awesome tutorial. Now I'm going to put my own spin on things and do things a little bit differently. But I just wanted to acknowledge that I did not come up with this idea on my own. So say hello if you're just now joining me. Hello Joy, how are you? I'm going to be sharing um, this live around on Facebook so that some of our friends can join us. So give me just a second, um, and while you're waiting, let me know if you can hear me okay and see me okay and where you're watching from. And then we're going to get started because these guys are pretty easy and pretty neat. Hi, Tammy. Thanks for joining me. This is going to be fun, guys. I'm excited. Oh, good, Joy. I'm glad that you are great. That is wonderful. It is almost Christmas, y'all. Can you believe it? We're like less than a week away. It's gonna be nuts. Hello. Hi, Crystal. Oh, you're watching from Georgia Joy? That's wonderful. All right, posting in one place. Y'all, my computer is moving at molasses speed. Hi, Tony, thanks for joining me. Hi, Sherry. I'll be real quick sharing this, I promise. Really, really quick. Awesome, friends. Okay, so we are shared and we are moving. Hi, sis. Thanks for joining me. Hi, Nikki. Hi, Christine from Florida. Ooh, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna lie. I kind of wish that I was in Florida yesterday. Today the weather's not so bad. Um, it's not quite so cold. But Lord have mercy, it was cold yesterday. Hi, Liz. Feliz Navidad. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so we are going to get started on this craft because it's really, really easy, but it's like slightly time consuming. So you should be able to do it th with things you already have at home, but I'm going to move our camera angle up top so it might get a little bit bumpy. So hang on for the ride and I am going to um, make sure that you guys have a great view. So I don't know why my computer is doing this. Hold on just a second. Okay, now I can see myself on my computer, so I can still read y'all's comments and all that good stuff. Get my computer picked up there, there we go. Okay. All right guys, so I'm gonna move you to this top rig real quick. So I'm sorry for any craziness and any movement. If you get motion sick, you may wanna tune out for just a second. I'm also going to unplug my microphone, so give me a hot minute and we will get started because you guys are gonna love this craft. It's really, really neat. Like I said, it's from, um, if you guys are just now joining me, this craft original inspiration is from a blog called somethingturquoise.com. So it's not my original idea, but I thought it was a phenomenal one and I'm gonna put my own spin on it. And thank you to my friend Kayla for sending this to me. She thought it would be a great live and I agree, it's gonna be really, really neat for you guys to learn how to make this because it's really pretty easy, but it's also like something that's kind of hard to make. So hang on just a hot second. You guys have been loving this overhead view, so I wanna make sure to keep on giving it to you because I think it's pretty great too. Let me know uh, where you're joining me from. Hello, hello. I am moving the camera angle real quick here so that you guys have a straight above my head view. So we will resume this craft here in just a moment. And I will show you guys what to do. But in the meantime, let me know where you are joining me from if you're just now jumping in. Hello from New Jersey. Hi, Beth. Thanks for joining me. Hello from Kentucky, Donna. I live in Kentucky, too. Where are you located? Hello from Oklahoma, Sherry. Hello from California, Sharon. So you guys are on... Pacific time. Hi, Corinne. Thanks for joining me. Hello, Miss Barbara from Tennessee and Liz from Tucson, Arizona. Look at that, y'all. You're from everywhere. That's so neat. I love that the internet connects us all. Hi, Kathy. You're also from New Jersey and Missouri. All kinds of amazing places. Okay. Sorry, guys. I had to make sure that your view was really, really good before I stuck you up there. 
and I've lowered you a little bit this time so that you can be a little bit closer to my craft. So hopefully I do not hit my head on this pole above me. <laughs> Normally you're a little bit higher up, but I think you're gonna be able to see better there. Okay, my friends, I think that that is a little bit better. So let me plug my microphone in real quick so you can hear me wonderfully. And we are gonna get started. So like I said, everything in this craft, everything you be able to buy at the store or you may already have in your craft room. We're not even gonna use a Cricut on it today. So we are going to make photo resin coasters. So the first thing that you're going to need is a mason jar lid. That is actually the basis for our um, project. And this is a pack of universal um, metal lids and rings that I got from Walmart. So you should be able to buy it at any Walmart. And in the original tutorial from somethingturquoise.com, the um, lady uses a one piece mason jar lid. Um, and I would like to use a one piece mason jar lid because I think that makes sense. But all I could find at the store was a two piece lid. So that's why we're gonna improvise with that. So that's where we're gonna begin. And the first thing that I'm gonna do to make my coaster a little bit differently is I'm gonna add a little bit of style and I'm gonna wrap the outside of my coaster with twine because I wanna give it like a little bit of a fresh look, a little bit of a different look because I think it would be really pretty. So I'm using this like brown um, twine with kind of a copper sparkle. So um, that's where I'm starting and I'm just going to hot glue the end of mine like to the coaster, or excuse me, not to the coaster, to the lid, and then I'm gonna wrap it around. So I hope you guys are having a wonderful week. I cannot believe that we are just days away from Christmas time, just really, really fly. Seems like it always does. You guys finished with Christmas shopping yet? I'm like 98% done. I have to go finish tomorrow. So I'm kind of anchoring my yarn by sinking it into my hot glue there. And then as soon as it sets, I'm gonna wrap it several times so we're gonna cover all this hot glue. But I just thought that would give it kind of a nice touch. Um, you could spray paint your mason jar lids if you wanted to go that route. There are tons of different ways you could do this. You could wrap it with twine instead of yarn, but I thought that this would be like a nice pretty color. I like this brown, I think it's pretty. Or you could use like colored yarn or whatever you want to do. You could use a ribbon even. So, yeah. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I don't want to make it too thick or anything. I just want to give it a little bit of style. And I'm going to try to keep the glue in about the same place where it is on this side, just so that I don't end up spreading hot glue, you know, all over my design. But it's just one side, so not a big deal it's probably way more hot glue than i need y'all i desperately need in my life a fine point hot glue gun i am such a mess with hot glue such a mess oh thank you callie so this is not my original idea she says how genius is this i needed this sooner so i promise you can do all this stuff with stuff you already have in your house but this is actually an original blog post by somethingturquoise.com and i'm going to link that for you guys in the description um, i forgot to do that before this video started and i meant to um, but she is the original one who had this idea and so i'm just kind of taking it and making it a little bit different but um yeah i think it's going to be really cool and i just thought this would be a really nice and thoughtful gift okay so now that I've got my um, yarn wrapped around my mason jar lid I'm done with the outside of my lid and the first thing that I need to do is be able to make this into a one-piece lid that's going to be able to hold my epoxy right so the next thing I'm going to do is put gloves on and I'm going to be putting UV resin around the edges of my lid to um, hold these together. So if you guys have never used UV resin before, we're just gonna use it for this one little piece and then I'm gonna go back to regular epoxy because I'm super excited to teach you guys about UV resin um, early in 2020, probably in March. Um, that's my plan is to kind of theme my content for you guys so you know what to expect 
over the coming months. And I'm thinking the month of March is going to be an entire month of epoxy crafts slash like resin. So I already tested this idea and I do want you guys to know that it works. So I was able to secure the um, top of this to my outside lid um, with UV resin, but I lied to you. This is not the next step. Huh. The first thing we're going to do is actually um, cut out our picture because the, the one benefit of using a lid like this is that you're going to be able to trace your um, picture exactly where you want it to go. So I am using um, some engagement photos that I already had for my husband and I printed out. Um, you can use any photo that you want, but I really like wedding photos. This would be super thoughtful for somebody um, to, you know, that has had a big thing happen this year, like they've moved into a new home or they've gotten married or they've had a baby. This would be especially impactful for them, but you could totally use family photos. You could use anything you want. Yes, Callie, you could use E6000 to secure it, um, but I want to be able to do this with you guys quickly. So that's why I'm using UV resin because we can do this in like one minute and it's going to be totally secure. But yes, if you don't have UV resin, you are more than welcome to use E6000 to secure the second part, I don't know, the middle of your lid to the outside of your lid. But before we do that, let's go ahead and secure our um, photo to this thing so that we don't have to mess with it again. So I'm going to start by putting the middle of my lid, which is how, that's the size I need the picture, onto my photo and I'm gonna trace it with a Sharpie so that I know where to cut it. And I'm just gonna cut it with scissors. Um, but don't laugh at me guys, because y'all know if you've ever watched my channel before, I'm literally horrible at cutting things. So this could be a little bit disastrous, but I'm gonna go for it. If you can figure out the exact measurements of your lid, you can use your Cricut to cut your photo if you want to. Um, but I just didn't want to mess with like making it complicated. So I'm just keeping it super simple and tracing with a Sharpie. And this is the way that something turquoise.com does it. She just traces it with a Sharpie and cuts it out. Um, but like I told you guys before, like the whole reason I bought a Cricut is because I'm horrible at cutting things. So that's why I'm going to do this. Actually, I have a second picture here, but I think I'm just going to make one to save us some time. So I'm going to put my lid aside and I'm just going to cut just inside the um, inside of my line because I want to make sure that this is going to fit on my lid well. So wherever I put my scissors, there they are. Hi, Joy. This is an actual photo that I um, got printed at the store. So also another detail that, thank you for asking that question. Um, the way that Something Turquoise does it is she actually prints the photo at home on a photo printer. So you could totally use um, like a printed photo that you printed yourself, but you're going to want some thicker paper. So I don't think that if you just printed out a photo on printer paper, I don't think that that would hold up under epoxy or UV resin. I think that would bleed all over the place and wouldn't be strong enough. So you can just use a pre-printed picture you already have um, printed out beforehand. So I'm just going to cut right inside this line the best that I can, but you guys can laugh. It's okay. I'm a horrible cutter with scissors. I think partially because I'm left-handed, but I never buy left-handed scissors ever. <laughs> Why? I don't know. I just, I've always cut with right-handed scissors. That's the way that I learned in school. And so, I don't know. I just never learned any different, but it also makes my cutting horrendous. And I can trim the edges real quick before I stick it in the coaster. I meant to use wedding photos of us for this project, but I realized I really haven't developed many of my wedding photos. So I just had these laying around already. I didn't even develop them for this project. I just already had them. And I love the silhouette because I think that's going to make a really cute coaster. But, you know, in theory, typically coasters come in a set of four. So if you were doing this for somebody, ideally you would have four photos. But, you know, details, right? I told you I'm trying to use what I have. <laughs> So I'm literally using what I have around the house. Okay. You're a bad cutter too, Callie. Is that what you're saying me too about? Lord, it is embarrassing, honestly. Like I am 27 years old and I cannot cut to save my life. So I bought a Cricut machine so that my Cricut can cut for me. Like, look at that flat side. Goodness. Okay. So it's a little pathetic, but we're going to look and see how it looks. 
before we move on. Oh, look, guys, it's not that bad. Let's double check and make sure it's going to fit down in here really nice. And yeah, it's going to fit really, really great. So before I attach this uh, middle to the outside edge, I'm going to go ahead and glue my photo on first. And I'm going to use hot glue for that. And the reason, let me explain this too. So my logic for not using hot glue around the edges of my mason jar lid is because you need to, it to be able to hold liquid. So there cannot be any holes in in like your contact. Otherwise, epoxy is going to leak out the bottom. So because hot glue tends to be so chunky and can leave things a little bit uneven, I'm going to fill this um, coaster with enough resin that it's going to level itself out and it's not going to be an issue. But that's why I did not use glue or like hot glue around the edge because I was afraid it would leave little lumps and bumps and then I would end up leaking epoxy out the bottom. So just so you know, Oh, okay. Callie is saying that you're left-handed also and you always use right-hand scissors. Me too. I just, I guess I just like never wanted to be a pain in the butt. Nobody ever offered me left-handed scissors till I was like older. And then people say to me now, they're like, why don't you use left-handed scissors? And I'm like, well, because my entire life I've used right-handed scissors. <laughs> so it's not a big deal. All right. So I'm going to push this on as centered as I can on top of the center of my lid my hot glue dried before I wished it would have. Hold on, guys. I'm going to peel this back off. It doesn't need to stick super well. Um, that's, like, not important. It just needs to... Um it just needs to be able to stick down so that it doesn't move around when you put your resin on there. So it doesn't need to be, like, you know, permanently secured. But you want to put it in there nice and centered so that when you sit it around the outside of your edges, you're not going to end up with one side like, you know, kind of curled up inside your rim. So, all right. So I ended up just doing one dot of hot glue in the center, and that's just enough to hold it on there. And then I think it's going to look great. Cute. So we're off to a really good start, guys. This is what it's going to look like in the end, but we have a few more steps to get there. So next comes the UV resin. So I like to put, this is a tip from Miss Ashley Jones. If you guys have ever seen um, her channel before, she's awesome. You can find her at Ashley Jones Creates. But when she uses UV resin, she is the one who recommended these silicone pot holders. And honestly, guys, they rock my socks because I can use them on my table without getting epoxy all over the place. And epoxy does not stick to silicone. So when I'm finished, I can literally like, I can like bend my thing and look how easy that just came out of that little honeycomb thing. Like the epoxy just like pops right out. So that's what I've been using underneath all my epoxy projects lately. Oh, Lori suggests a spray adhesive instead of using hot glue. That's a great suggestion, Lori. I think you could definitely um, add that to your, to your lid with spray adhesive. Absolutely. But again, like I'm in my house and I can't, you know, leave this video to go spray it. So that's part of my problem with this, but that's a great idea. Okay. So this is the UV resin that I use. I can link this for you guys in the description. Um, I get this from Amazon and I've been pretty happy with it. This was also the recommendation that Ashley Jones had in her description as well. And I've been happy with it so far. So this is what I use. And so UV resin, in case you guys have never used it before, is different from epoxy because it comes in one bottle and there's no mixing together part to part. Um, so it's a different, kind of a different animal to work with. So you literally just take the top off and work with it as is. Um, I will tell you that I think it's a lot smellier. Um, that was, is that a good word for you guys? Smellier. <laughs> It has a lot more odor than epoxy does, in my opinion, so it is very strong. So I know you guys can't see it, but I do have the door to my craft room open, and I have my ceiling fan going um, to get some good ventilation in here because if you are prone to headaches, smells from things like epoxy or UV resin can make you um, have headache. So I do have my room uh, well ventilated for this, and also um, I'm wearing gloves, as you can see, so please, please, please 
always wear gloves when you use these chemicals. And honestly, when I'm not doing a tutorial with you guys, I'm wearing a mask. Um, I wear a painter's mask because I think it filters out enough VOCs that I am happy with it. Um, and it keeps me from getting like a scratchy throat from the epoxy and it protects me enough that I've never had an adverse reaction. But I would highly encourage you to do your own research before you start using these chemicals and protect yourself in all the ways you feel like you need to, okay? So if you start feeling bad after you use after you're using it, step up your protection game and do what you need to do to keep yourself safe. Um, so like I said, I'm typically wearing a mask. If I was wearing a mask, you wouldn't be able to understand me and that's why I don't wear one on my videos. But when I'm working with this alone, when I was up till 1 a.m. working on projects last night, I had a mask on. So just wanted to note that. So we're gonna use UV resin and then we're gonna cure it in a UV lamp. So also it's much more expensive like by the ounce because it's pre-mixed. So just keep that in mind as well. And a lot of them have this really nice applicator tip. So I'm not even gonna use a brush or anything. I'm literally just going to like dab it along the inside rim. I'm like giving the bottle a light squeeze to get some out there. But um, I'm also just kind of running the tip inside the mason jar lid to make sure that it's not necessarily evenly coated, but that there's a little bit of UV resin all the way around the edge of my lid. Because I want to make sure that every spot of the center of my lid has contact with the UV resin because I don't want any gaps. Oops. Okay, so putting the lid back on there. And now that the inside of my edge is coated. I'm going to drop this back down and I'm going to be using a UV lamp to cure um, my UV resin. Now you can set it out in the sun and let it cure, but it does take substantially longer to do things that way, especially when it's not a particularly sunny day. So I bought a $10 lamp off Amazon. Um, it's a UV lamp that I can also link in the description for you and I like it much better. And really the only safety precaution that you need to remember with that is to not stare directly into the blue light. It's basically like the same lamp that you use when you go get your nails done, um, but it is not smart to stare directly at it. So once I turn it on, I have some little pieces of cardstock that I'm going to put over it to try to shield our eyes the best that I can. So I'm going to move this off to the side a little bit so you guys can still see it, but um, I don't want to get it out of the frame for y'all. But so I'm going to set my nail lamp over top, directly over top my project. And I'm going to set a little cardstock thing over here and over here. But my lamp has a setting for just like on and on as long as you want. Um, 60 seconds and 120 seconds. So I did 120 seconds last time and that was plenty enough for me. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, my nail lamp has no bottom, so I just stick it directly over top my silicone um, trivet. So I'm going to cover this little guy with cardstock and you can kind of see the light out the sides, but at least you're not staring directly at the light because it's not good for your eyes. And I'm going to check what questions you guys have while we are waiting because we have about two minutes. Hi, Mary. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Dar. Thanks for, for jumping in. Greetings and salutations. Hope you all are well and taken care. Yes. Merry Christmas to all of you. I'm so excited that it's almost here. Are you guys ready for Christmas? What do you all think about that? I'm like mostly ready. I still have a little bit of shopping left to do. I'm not completely done, but I'm getting there. I'm going to finish it all tomorrow and then I will be all finished. So yay. I swear Christmas has snuck up on me. It always sneaks up on me. <laughs> yes and no. Kind of ready, kind of not ready. Yes, I totally, totally understand that. Totally, totally. I never even fully decorated my house, guys. I'll be honest. I was so excited to have my first Christmas in my house because um, you guys probably know um, back in the spring, my husband and I bought our very first house. And so we moved in and it's been wonderful, but I just have not had the time and the focus to decorate. I did a little bit, um, but yay, Mary, go you. She says, Merry Christmas already. That's great. Good for you. Good for you. <coughs> I told Santa to bring me a cricket. Do you have a cricket, Joy, or are you brand new to the cricket? That's awesome. I got my first cricket. Um, well, I kind of bought it on like Black Friday. 
<clears throat> pardon me guys, sorry. I bought it on Black Friday um, and, and unwrapped it at Christmas time. In 2016. Oh, thank you, Dar. She says, belated congratulations, homeowners. Yep, it's pretty awesome. We've had a lot of fun on, honestly. My husband is amazing at maintaining our house. Like, he is so handy, and he is so good at, like, working on stuff. And so, between me making it pretty and him fixing all the things, I would say we're a pretty sweet team. So... Oh, someone is chiming in and saying, the light that you will see won't cause your eye issues without your paper. I know because I am a licensed nail tech and I use an IVD light eight hours a day. Well, good to know. Thank you, Debbie, for joining in and letting us know that. I, it's just something like, I feel like it's just not a good idea, so I just cover it with paper just in case. Does the light dry the resin? Yes, it sure does, and that's exactly how it works. So regular epoxy resin takes like between four and eight hours to cure, depending on how thick it is, but the light with UV resin dries it in like a couple of minutes. So it's really, really amazing stuff to work with. So, oh Mary, you use a Cameo, that's great. Okay, so let's double check and make sure that we've got good contact. So now as you guys can see, oh, oh no, it popped right out. Well, let's do one more little coat of um, UV resin. Now granted, the epoxy resin is gonna come in and seal it all. So we don't have to worry about it being permanently stuck because the, UV, the regular epoxy resin will take care of it. But when I did this before, um, in my test before I showed you guys this, it totally, totally sealed it off. So let's go back and do it one more time and we'll do one more pass under the UV light. And then we'll go ahead and get started because I'm sure that the epoxy will fill in any gaps that we um, need to. Okay. All right, my friends. So I used a little bit more UV resin this time just to make sure that I've got a little bit of a better coat. I'm going to squish my lid down in there. Let's make sure that it has really good contact all the way around. And we're going to do one more 120 second stint just to make sure. I'll keep my UV resin out of the way so it doesn't get cured by my light. And I'm going to shove it back there so that it makes sure it gets full contact. And then we will go ahead and start. You know what? While we're waiting, ah, while we're waiting, we'll mix up the epoxy because we need to do that anyways, and that usually takes a couple minutes. So if you guys are unfamiliar with epoxy, definitely check out my DIY epoxy tumbler series, which is a, which is a whole playlist on YouTube. So um, there's tons of videos, um, there's five of them on it, and I show you how to mix it up multiple times. So I'm gonna move kind of quickly through this part of the process, but if you have specific questions, let me know, and I will answer them for you. So I'm using Pro Marine Epoxy. Um, that's what I like to use, and that's what I currently have in bottles, so that's what I'm using. And I'm going to be mixing a bit more epoxy than I usually do. So I'm going to mix parts A and B separately in medicine cups. Then I'm going to put them together in this little portion cup to actually mix it together. So I'm going to do... I think I might do a, a full 20 milliliters. So I'm not sure how much epoxy I need because these are a little bit deeper lids than the ones that somethingturquoise.com recommended. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix it 20 milliliters, which is probably way too much, but I don't wanna have to go back and mix it up again. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna start with part A because it's the thicker part. And actually, if I do it that way, I only need to use one medicine cup, but I'll still put it in my portion cup to mix it because I don't want to spill over the sides of my medicine cup. So I've got to hold it up to the light a little bit so you guys might actually get a little bit of a better view. Where are my milliliters at here? I'm going to use um, Katie's trick in our series is that she always marks with a Sharpie where she is going to fill her resin to. And so today... I am going to take advantage of her trick also. So in order to um, make 20 milliliters of epoxy, I'm gonna mix 10 milliliters of each part because it is a one to one ratio. 
All right, friends, while we're sitting here, I'm going to go ahead and do another pass at our UV lamp just because we're literally just sitting here anyways. So um, sometimes you can do that when you're working with UV resin. It just kind of depends on like what the needs of it are, but it doesn't hurt anything to do a couple extra cures on your lamp. It's not necessarily like a bad thing um, if you have the time and the ability. So that will do another 120 seconds to cure my UV resin a little bit more. And I'm gonna go ahead and mix up my parts A and B of epoxy. We can finish up our craft here. So like I said, this really isn't a difficult craft. It's a little bit time consuming. I wouldn't say it's a super quick one, but you can find the mason jar lids. I'll show you guys again in just a second here. Um, I bought these mason jar lids at Walmart, so you should be able to find them at your Walmart as well. Um, they're separate lids and rings. I found them in the um, canning aisle with the other mason jar stuff. And then you can use photos laying around your house that you already have. And you can use epoxy, obviously, if you have that also. You love to mix epoxy. Yay, I know, it's so much fun. I really don't like the mixing process, but I know what you mean. It is so fun to start mixing it because then I get to play. You guys, I can't tell you what I was playing with last night because some of it's going to be Christmas presents for my family and some of them watch these videos, so I can't tell you. But the stuff I was mixing last night was so much fun. I was having a blast. I was playing with glitter. It was awesome. That's why I was up so late because I get excited and then I'm just unstoppable. Like once I start a craft, I cannot stop. So it was already kind of late. And then all of a sudden I was just off and running, <laughs> just running and playing with it. It was so much fun. Are you guys like that too? Are you all late night crafters? I am a hundred percent a late night crafter. So you'll notice part A is super thick, um, but part B is a lot thinner. So it's going to go a lot faster, but part A takes forever to get out of the bottle. That's why I like to put it in these UV, or these UV bottles. <laughs> no, these condiment bottles, because, and I bought these at Walmart as well, um, because it gives me a lot better control. When I use the big bottles of Promarine, I really can't control the flow very well, so trying to get my pour perfectly even is really, really hard to do. So I'm almost there with part A. Let me stop and see where I'm at. Okay, I think we're looking pretty good for part A. So I'm gonna quit there. Okay. All right, and now I'm gonna add in part B. You'll notice that my part B is a little bit yellowed and that's okay, it just means that my epoxy is a little bit on the older side, but once I mix it together, you won't be able to notice the yellowing at all. Boom, okay, cool. So that's 20 milliliters, like I said of epoxy total, 10 milliliters of each part. And while I mix it up, I'm gonna pour it into this portion cup, just because when I'm gonna be mixing a lot or pouring a lot, I like to use these. I, um, cause I'm afraid I'm gonna mix over the sides of the medicine cup and spill my epoxy, mess up my proportions. So it just gives me like a little bit more room, basically. But I like to use medicine cups. That's my favorite way to mix epoxy. So I think it's the most accurate way. Other people use like the syringes and stuff, but honestly, I've just never mastered that. It just never worked for me that well. So let me know in the comments what you like to use to mix epoxy. Are you a medicine cup user? Do you use the syringes from the pharmacy? Is there another way you do it? I know some people that use the big pump bottles, they just do a pump of this and a pump of that. And like that's as much as they do, which is perfectly understandable because if you had pumps, That'd be great, but I don't buy epoxy in huge quantities because I don't always play with epoxy. Um, like I wouldn't say it's rare for me, but I don't do it all the time. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix this guy. This is a little silicone stir stick. Um, I really like using silicone stir sticks because they are reusable. So I can just pull the epoxy off of it after it dries and I can keep on using it for other projects. So, Yes, and um, I like the medicine cups as well, Dar. They're awesome. Um, I was using one last night. The only thing is I find it hard to measure for small quantities. That's why last night I used it because I was mixing a ton. So I was able to just like mix it all in my medicine cup. But when I'm mixing small quantities, I like to mix in cups like this. 
And I think my silicone stir stick is from third degree laser. I'm pretty sure. So you'll notice when you begin to mix epoxy that it's really, really cloudy at first. That's the normal part of the chemical reaction. That's not unusual. And then it's going to get clearer when it's fully mixed together. And we've got a few bubbles. I like to let my epoxy sit for a couple minutes also. I don't know if that's just like a me thing or what, but after I mix it for a little while, I like to let it sit for a minute or two and kind of settle in before I use it if possible. And I've got a fair amount of bubbles in here, but I'm not too worried about them. I think it's just from pouring in the pieces and mixing them. Typically what I would do is I would give it a shot with my heat gun. But I'm gonna let that settle for a moment and let some of those bubbles work themselves out. So we can keep this on here. All right guys, so we're feeling a lot more secure the second time around. That feels much, much tighter. And when I did this test earlier, I don't know if I told you guys that, after I put the UV resin in the um, other lid, I um, put water in it to make sure that it could hold the liquid. So I'm sure this will work. You said you saw someone put a small portion into a tilted small cup and then put the other part into the other side, maybe two mils total. Wow, that's cool. I don't know if I could be that precise, but that's pretty neat. Okay. So, we're looking awfully bubbly, my friends. I'm slightly concerned about it. And probably what I'll do for the next couple of hours, I have a um, small space heater running in this room because it is pretty chilly up here. Um, and I will probably let this run and I'll let the um, heater run until I go to bed and then I'll turn it off because um, I'll shut the door while this is curing so that I'm not around the fumes and neither is um, my husband or my cat. Becky said, hi, Alex. You can set your par A in some warm water for about 10 minutes before using it. Oh, you will bet substantially less bubbles when you mix it. That's a great idea, Becky. Thank you for the suggestion. That's super cool. Yeah, that's a great idea. And so last night what I did is I put this in front of the space heater, but obviously guys, since I'm doing a video, I can't really walk away from you, but that's what I did last night to make sure that my epoxy was nice and slowly warmed, but that's okay. I may heat it with, I may hit it with a heat gun when we're done with this or set it in front of the space heater um, after it's in here just to, you know, kind of get it done. But I want to show you guys what to do. So next, we're literally just going to pour the epoxy straight into the coaster. Nothing crazy. And it's going to do all the leveling work for us. So I'm going to give it a second to self-level and kind of seal off a little bit. Kind of pour it around. Get it to all the sides. And you guys, if you want to follow me on Instagram, I will show you the final product when it is finished curing tomorrow. Um, so you can find me on Instagram at DIY Alex Vanover with the V as in Victor. That's my Instagram handle. So I'm sure I'll be posting a photo of this when it's finished tomorrow. So I'm just filling in a good bit of the mason jar um, lid. So it's probably say maybe half full. Um, <laughs> Dar says, we can bet on you all the time. That's right, Becky. You rock. All right. So I'm just filling this guy in. So again, I used a total of 20 milliliters of epoxy, and that was perfect for me. So it kind of depends on the size of your mason jar lid, because you guys know they can vary quite a bit. Um, and if you want to save yourself a step and not use the UV resin like I had to, or even E6000 or anything else, um, you can just go ahead and find a one piece mason jar lid and not worry about all of this. Um, something turquoise recommends using kind of a shallower, like wide mouth mason jar lid. So really it's just kind of whatever suits you, whatever's going to work for you. Um, 
So I just happened to choose this because I wanted it to be easy and accessible for you guys. Um, so that's why I decided to get mine from Walmart because I wanted to make sure that you guys were able to find the materials as well because it's crunch time now. So if you're using this as a gift idea, you need to be able to get it locally and not in the store. So that's why I did what I did. Um, but you can do yours any way that your little heart would desire to. So um, another thing that you could do that I'm not going to do because I can't flip my coaster over right now. But if you were giving these as a gift to somebody in a set of four, I would probably flip this lid over and I would put like, you know, love Alex or whatever on the bottom of my coaster so that the people can always remember where they're from um, because they're probably not ever going to see the bottom. So I think it would be neat to kind of mark it as like, this was my gift to you in case they ever forget. Um, but I think that this gift would be really, really special for people, like I said, who've had like a milestone this year or... Um, you know, maybe they're engaged and this is their last Christmas engaged and they'll be married by next Christmas or if they did get married this year or even like photos of their home, you know, or you could do the same photo four times if you needed to. And really, because you don't need it very big, you could probably even get the photo off Facebook. Ideally, Facebook kind of butchers the quality of photos. So ideally, you would get an original copy or get it from the person themselves. But if you really can't, um, you know, if you can... If you can get the photo um, off Facebook, that will work. Another tip for these is that you don't want to use a super zoomed in photo um, because you need to be able to cut all the way around it and fit everything into like this small space. So if you have a photo that's cropped really tight, you may want to choose a different one. Um, but let me read through and see if you guys have any questions, but I hope this was helpful to you and I hope this is an idea that you guys can use. So let me know in the comments if you're planning to use this. Um, as soon as YouTube uploads my video and allows me to start editing the caption, I will add in the Something Turquoise link with the original blog post because this was her original idea. Um, and I'll add in all the materials that you can find either at Walmart or on Amazon. Like, you know, for example, like the trivets and the UV resin and stuff like that, you will have to get on Amazon. As far as I know, I mean, I'm, you can probably find the silicone trivets in the store too, but um, I'll show you guys what I'm using because in order to do this gift idea, you probably already have to have UV resin and or um, epoxy. And I believe you could probably do the center of this with UV resin as well. UV resin is a lot more expensive because I don't know, it's just a totally different chemical. So that's why I use epoxy like in the center because it takes a lot more and I wouldn't want to use most of my bottle of UV resin. But if UV resin is all you had, you can do a thinner layer and put that in the middle as well. So let's see what you guys have to say. Do you have any other questions? Let's see. Liz says, can't wait to start my wonderful staff. Gave a gallon size of epoxy and her husband made me a cup turner. Liz, that is awesome. That's so exciting. Congratulations. Make sure that you check out my DIY cup series because it's really going to help you um, understand the basics of getting started. We just we decided to just show you one technique. Um, so it's only one way to do things all the way throughout. And it's the way that Katie and I thought was best because Kate Boyle Crafts and I are the ones who collaborated on it. So it's just one perspective, but we wanted to keep it really simple for you guys. So make sure that you check that out um, so that you can get some good resources. Cut something from vinyl for the bottom. Yes, Hope, I was just talking about that. I really love to put my name on the bottom if I was giving this as a gift. Uh, right now, I can't flip my coaster over, but this would be the perfect spot to, um, you know, put love whoever or something like that, or even like a quote or a Bible verse would go well on the back of this if it was really small. So there's lots of other customization you can do with these as well. Yes, Tammy, I considered putting a little bit of fine glitter in mine as well. I was a little bit worried it would cloud the photo. So I was thinking, I don't have any mica powder, but if you had some mica powder, you could mix that into your epoxy and give your photos kind of like a filtered look, which would be really neat also. So there's just tons of stuff. Oh, thanks, Liz. I'm glad that you'll be watching my videos. Um, so there's tons of different ways to do this. I think it's a really neat um, I think it's a really neat way to like make something really special for your friends and family. So um, thank you, Diane. Merry Christmas to you as well. Yes, and I will see you, sis, on Christmas Eve. Um, so guys, if you have any other questions, please feel free to put those in the comments. Even if you catch this in the replay, make sure that you comment and let me know that you're catching it in the replay and ask any questions that you have because I'm happy to come back and answer those for you even long after this video is over. So if you haven't already, please make sure that you subscribe below to DIY Alex. I have been doing daily gift 
daily gift ideas for Christmas every day between December 3rd and Christmas Eve. So hopefully those have been helpful to you. Um, you can find those on Facebook and Instagram. And my username and on both Facebook and Instagram is at DIY Alex Vanover with a V as in Victor. So you can find me easily there. And if you are a um, DIY bride, if you're getting engaged soon, or if you have a DIY bride in your life, so maybe um, one of your children is getting married or like you have a sister or a friend that wants to um, help wants to use your Cricut to make things for their wedding, make sure that you join my um, Facebook group. That has been so much fun getting that little community started. You can find that by going to my Facebook page. It's called Cricut Brides and Wedding Crafts. So you can either search for that in your groups or you can go to my DIY Alex Facebook page and you will find the link there. So. You guys, thank you so much for spending your evening with me. It was so, so much fun. I hope you love this coaster. Don't forget to check me out on Instagram so that you can see the final result tomorrow. And I hope we can craft again soon. I gotta take you out of my phone holder to say bye. <laughs> Let's see. All right, guys, have a wonderful Merry Christmas because I probably won't see you before then. So January starts a whole series of Cricut for Beginners. So we're going to be doing tons of videos for those of you who are new. Or if you're not new, you can refresh some skills and learn some new stuff along with the beginners. So I'll see you guys later, and I hope you have a wonderful, happy, and safe Merry Christmas. Bye.